Okay, so this is where we ended in the previous section. So in this one, we'll be creating a script. So creating scripts is pretty easy. So in this section, I normally like to have a folder for scripts. Okay, so inside this folder, you can then add your scripts. It's just an easier way to manage things. You can create a JavaScript file, or a TypeScript file. I normally work with TypeScript files because I like um, the way the, the source code is written in, in TypeScript. Um, TypeScript is uh, able to have JavaScript source code in it as well. So um, even if you want to create a purely JavaScript game, um, you could still use a TypeScript file and that would work just fine. So in this case, I'll be creating a player script. Okay, so I'll open it. Okay, if you've installed Visual Studio, um, your Visual Studio code, um, at this point, you might want to open it. Um, I have um, the Cocos uh, plugin already installed, so um, this is why the default text editor in this case is uh, Visual Studio Code. But if you've not um, done that, um, the easiest way is just open your Visual Studio Code um, generally. Okay, so open your Visual Studio Code um, the way you would open it. So you open it there and then go on extension. Or oh, is it... Uh, Yes, on developer, then Visual Studio Code workflow, then you can go and install the Visual Studio Code extension, okay, as well as the Chrome debug setting, okay, then you could update the Visual Studio Code API source if, if you already have that, but generally just install the Visual Studio Code extension, um, then you will be fine, okay. So if, if you've done that, when you double click, the JavaScript or the TypeScript file, it should then be able to open it using Visual Studio Code by default. So I generally like to get rid of the default properties. Okay, um, we've got three methods in here. Okay, um, so these methods include uh, first up the onload. So the onload will have settings. Um, that pertain to before the game loads or as the game loads what are some of the things you want to happen like you could enable physics you could um, enable the sound um, engine the audio engine um, things like that so things that you want to be loaded up as the game is about to to load okay then start as the game scene starts uh, rendering you would write your code in there then of course the update if you want to update uh, if, you, if you want source code that should be running at the refresh rate of the game so mostly it will be around 60 times per second um, if your game is at 60 frames per second so the source code that's in here will be continuously running it's a loop okay so what we'll include in here are basically just some properties and then we'll show how we can attach these properties so the first property because this is a player script this is going to be for the the blob itself okay so we'll be making it jump so we need a jump height okay this is going to be a number um, okay my equal to sign is not fine let me just get my own screen for some reason it's not responding well pardon me for that okay so we will then just use that okay so that's all I need copy this in advance okay so set it to zero and then we'll save this okay so um, creating properties allows you to be able to make um, adjustments to the game without coming to adjust 
um, the source code. So I will go to the purple monster itself, this guy, and then close all of these. Then here on add component, I will add custom component, then player. Realize that player is the script we've just created player. So if I do that, notice that it's got a property of jump height with zero because that's what um, I've created here, jump height with zero. I'll create another property. Okay, so this one is going to be for the jump duration. Okay, so this jump duration will also be a number and then this shall be also set to zero. Okay, then we'll add another property. This one will be the maximum movement speed. So max movement speed. Okay, like that. And then of course the last one will be our acceleration. So property acceleration number zero. All right. So when we have that saved, then when we come back to our game, click the purple monster and then check the player script that we attach to it, you will see that all of those properties we've just defined have been added here. And that's the beauty of Cocos Creator because this now means that if I want it to be uh, doing something, maybe at 100, then later I discover that I need it to be 150, I can make those adjustments right from the user interface instead of going to, to, the, to the source code. So Yes, so we are on our path to become Cocos Creator game developers. I hope you guys are excited. Um, this is the end for this one. Stay tuned for the next one.